Hi, Larry Benko here again. This is a video showing how SimSmith can calculate voltages and currents and powers through the components. There are four lines that exist below each component except for the generator in SimSmith and they the top two lines indicate an impedance, a power, and a voltage and a current. The label for each component is on the right hand side. These are all right justified indicating that all these values are at this point looking into the component. So let's look at what this actually means. We have a 50 ohm resistor here and we see the impedance at this point looking back this way as 50 plus J0. We have a generator that is specified to produce a 1 watt into a 50 ohm load. It is producing 1 watt and we see a small v and a small i. Small v, small i means a cross component. It's got arrows going up and down to show us that we're really the, component's ver the component is a vertical component or a shunt component and we see 7.07 .07 volts and 0.14 amps. Product of those two is 1 watt since they're in phase. Now let's add another component and see what happens here. Let's add a series resistor and to make things a little bit easier let's just change the voltage source to be a 10 volt source. It's a t Notice how we had a resistor there before when we, add, when we add this one, there'll be no resistor. It's a 10 volt, zero ohm output impedance source. It's just 10 volts, period. Now, what do we see? Well, we see this component having 5 volts at 100 milliamps through it. This component is 5 volts at 100 milliamps. These two resistors in series, 5 volts plus 5 volts is the 10 volts our source is. 10 volts divided by 100 ohms, which these two resistors are in, in, in series, is 100 milliamps. The power for each one of those components is the 5 volts times the 100 milliamps, which is 0.5 watts. So, SimSmith can calculate the power, the voltage, the current, just fine in all the components. The impedance here was 50 plus J0 looking this way. Here it's 100 plus J0 because it's this impedance plus this impedance since this is a series component. Let's make this component for the moment a shunt component. I'll just hit Control R. We'll move it. Now, we look at both these two components again, and we see that both of them have 10 volts across them. Both of them have 0.2 amps because 10 volts across 50 ohms is 0.2 amps. That means each component now has 2 watts in it, or 2 watts consumed in the, each component. The SWR looking in, in, into this circuit is also indicated here in both cases, plus gamma. Gamma is, of course, the uh, is, is what Smith chart actually consists of. Smith chart is a complex is a plot of complex reflection coefficient, and gamma is complex reflection coefficient. So in this case, we have 0.33. So we start at the, at the beginning. This is 0.33 of the diameter, and it's at 180 degrees, indicating that the 50 ohms and the 50, 50 ohms and 50 ohms in, in parallel, or 25 ohms, we're at the 25 plus J0 point here. Notice our impedances. This looking into this point is 50 plus J0. Looking into this point is two resistors in parallel. It's 25 plus J0. Everything is good to go so far. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, it looks pretty, looks pretty cool. One thing to be, to be known, to be careful about here is this only applies at that frequency. So if we didn't have this component anymore and we had a capacitor, this capacitor, as we, as I'd indicated earlier, comes in at a 50 ohm reactance in its capacitor, so it's minus minus J50. So let's look at the react, look at the impedance again. 50 plus J0 looking into this direction. This point here would be 50 minus J50. The 0.03 is a little resistance in the capacitor due to 2K uh, Q of 2000. And if we want this to go go away, we can just put a zero in here or we can leave it blank and the Q goes to a million in which case we see 50 minus J50 exactly. Well, very close to exactly. We still see one microwatt in this component because a Q, the highest Q that Sim Smith allows a component to have unless you override it is one million. One million is not much of a limitation as there's no parts that have that kind of Q. But if we look now at the voltages and currents again, let's do that. We see a 10 volt source 
7 volts here, 7 volts there. Both of these components have a reactance of 50 ohms. Now, the current is such that it's in phase in this component, it's not in phase in this component. So, this component has a watt, this component has one microwatt. But again, SimSmith is doing its job. Now, if we change the frequency here, we will see these change, because what will happen is, as we go up in frequency, the reactance of this will get smaller, the voltage here will get larger. So let's go up in frequency some, and what we see is the voltage here rose to 8 volts from, from 7. This one's dropping, but it didn't have any power consumed in it to speak of anyways. This one sees more power. Again, exactly as you would expect, um, expect it to work. There's a couple other little issues that, that go along with this circuit that we need to be careful about. And that is the fact that, what does power really mean? We see an up arrow next to the watts. Up arrow means in the component. If we click on either one of these, we can drive it this way, which is the left arrow, dBW means dB relative to a watt, or just an arrow and a, and a, and a, and a power in watts, or an up arrow in dB relative to a watt, or back to where we, were, where we were. There are four choices. So let's think about this for a minute. This has one watt in it. One watt is the same as zero dBW. Let's get it to where it shows that. And we show minus 139.2 microwatts, which is pretty close to zero. So this effectively reads the power in the part in dB. Now, if we click on this again, to go to the left here, we see the power delivered into this component. Well, in the case of the load, delivered into the component or consumed by the component is exactly the same thing. So for the um, inductor, it doesn't, excuse me, for the load, it doesn't mean anything at all. For the capacitor here, it doesn't mean much because it's basically doesn't have any power consumed in it. But if we were to change this component to say like a resistor, and let's look at this again now. In this case, we have basically 10 volts across 100 ohms, and that turns out to be 1 watt is, is put into this circuit right here. This shows 1 watt going into the circuit. This shows a half a watt going into the circuit. The fact that this component here has a watt going into it and a watt going in, coming out of it means this component is a half a watt. There it is, a half a watt. So, if you want to know what's in each component, up arrow makes, makes more sense. If you want to know what's delivered to the next stage down the, down the line, left arrow makes more sense. And then, of course, the two other counterparts to these are d, dB relative to a watt. So half a watt is minus 3 dB relative to a watt. And half a dB, excuse me, half a watt, half a watt minus 3 dB relative to each one. Here we have 0 dB relative to watt or 1 watt being delivered. Here we have a half a watt being delivered. So that's something to be a little bit careful about. If you have this in the wrong mode, you can easily draw the wrong conclusion. Generally, I think for most people, they would like to leave it here. Most people, I think, believe feel better with a power in watts than they do in dB relative to a watt. And power in the component itself is generally probably a little more useful than power delivered to the circuit down, from there downstream. But nevertheless, both are supported. And uh, you know, this, this effectively act, makes SimSmith almost into a multimeter because these component values, this frequency, and basically what do you get? You get a meter. It doesn't tell you phases between any voltages and currents. It doesn't tell you phases between uh, currents and, and different components or anything else. It just tells you what a multimeter would tell you. Each individual measurement is kind of like standalone. Now there's one other kind of voltage we have in current that I haven't shown yet. And I'm going to bring this component up. If we look at this component, it's a complicated component, but it comes in as nothing more than just a shorted wire. So it really does nothing. Now we see our voltage in current here, capital V and capital I. Capital V and capital I are done because it doesn't make any sense to say the voltage and current across the component in here. This circuit could have 20 components in it. You wouldn't know which which component you were referring to voltage and current about. Therefore, V and I, capital V, on this side over here, we have 10 volts delivered into this component. 
into this component and we have 100 milliamps delivered in, delivered into the component it doesn't say anything about where it goes or anything else it's the best you can do if you don't know what's in there if you want to know what's exactly in there you have to use the plot command here which is much more complicated and uh, certainly not a not a basic piece of SimSmith but just keep in mind that there are there are three kinds of voltages and currents there's capital V capital I which is entering the part there's left arrow right arrow V and I which is across a series component and there's up arrow down arrow V and I which is across a shunt component and that's pretty much all I wanted to say about this topic it's a very useful piece of uh, piece of SimSmith. It's not in any other Smith, Smith chart programs I've ever seen. And it's it kind of gives you um, the ability at any given time if you got a circuit to see where the power is being consumed especially. So with that um, I think I'll, I'll call it quits and um, I'll see you again for another video. Hope everyone enjoyed this. Thank you.